Good morning, and welcome to our daily word this morning. I invite you to join me for our time together as we continue our journey through Scripture today and the daily word, daily, um, how we've done this daily together and continue to strive to live better lives and to, and to share our lives together as we've done for all of these days. So, as always, I'm glad you could join me for our time together. I'm always, always grateful when you say good morning and uh, remind me that you're here and good news i'm on time today i apologize the last couple days have been crazy um with everything going on and so i know i've been late two days in a row but back on schedule today and that's good news um, at least for me as i try to be on time for things so today is daily word number 720 so i'm glad you could join me again and so um our scripture for this morning is from Revelation 21, verse 6. And I chose this scripture um, based on the events of the past two and a half weeks at church and the sharing of lives together and dinners and conversation and what, what it means for us as we do that together. And so from Revelation 21, verse 6, I he we hear these words. The one on the throne said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. You know that my drink of choice is this. You'll rarely see me without a coffee cup. I've always told people at church, um, if I'm in the building, there's going to be coffee, always. Um, and there's lots of options to make coffee. You know, a regular coffee maker, a Keurig, you know, we have all kinds of options. I also drink a lot of iced tea. Probably, neither one is probably good for my gut or my kidneys, uh, for that matter. But, you know, it's it's what keeps me going, um, it seems. Drinks tea or juice or water. Conversation can be can be boiled up when we sit down over a cup of coffee. Quenching our physical thirst is necessary and is life sustaining. But quenching our spiritual thirst is as well. In the last two and a half weeks, we at church at St. Paul's have hosted three funeral dinners. We have served um, in excess of 250 people, I think. And when you arrive at church for a funeral dinner, there is that welcoming fellowship hall. And then there's these long tables of food, <laughs> of all kinds of food hot dishes and salads and pies and you name it. We have all kinds of food that just fill these tables. These funeral dinners are a reminder to me about the need to quench our thirst, our spiritual thirst, our, our thirst to be in community. The first one, a couple weeks ago, was the largest one. We had no seats left in the entire place. And many, many, many volunteers brought dishes. And many volunteers came to work and to set things up and to clean up and run the dishwasher and do all of those things. The second two were a little bit smaller, but not, hor not small, but a little bit smaller. And again, people took the opportunity and they said yes to fixing the dish and bringing it and sharing their abundance with folks who are hungering and thirsting and needed their thirst quenched. Yesterday, our funeral dinner, again, the table was amazing and, and the folks were, were so thankful. There was a young man, um, I was told, there was a young man who came back to the kitchen to, be, to say thank you for this amazing thing that we had done and person after person after person um, was so thankful for the opportunity to sit down together and to share in a meal and the conversation 
that for us in those moments are our spiritual drinks. It's a way that we keep each other hydrated, but it happens in both. It happens in two ways. The first way is, of course, because you got a phone call from somebody that said, so we're having a funeral dinner. Can you fix a dish? And everybody says yes. And there are plenty of dishes. And you've been gracious with that. And it's it's made with love and grace. And it, and it shares um, the gift of quenching thirst, if you will, with those who get it. And the second is those who receive it. Those who come many times, um, especially yesterday, except for a couple of folks, everybody who came to the church was a stranger. And they came and they, I took them in the sanctuary. People were admiring our building and all that it came with it. And they, the food was incredible. And they were so thankful because many folks yesterday were traveling back to Kentucky, where many were from, and others were going to the airport to get on a plane back to Florida. And that gift of spiritual nourishment was such an important thing. Jesus reminds us, we're reminded us, we're reminded, I'm sorry, in this text, that to the thirsty, I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Yesterday and in all those dinners, there was lots of coffee, lemonade, iced tea, juice, all consumed as well. And conversation that filled the space over and over and over. This opportunity to share our lives together, this quenching thirst that Christ gives us, gives us meaning and purpose. When we're well hydrated spiritually, when, we're, when our bellies are full, when we've shared our lives together, when you've worked in the kitchen at a funeral dinner, um, when you've had the opportunity to share your abundance with folks who come down those steps or down that elevator and find this table spread with goodness that quenches their thirst for community. It's then I think that we are able to keep our feet under us. Yesterday, I sat with Larry and we talked a long time and folks just kept coming to our table. So thankful, so thankful, so thankful because what happened is the idea that we quenched their thirst. To the thirsty, I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. That's the opportunities that we've had in these past two and a half weeks. We're tired. We need, you know, we need a breather. We, we understand that, but, but everybody, you have to recognize that that's how God works. That's how God works in us. When we, when we are quenched, when our thirst is quenched, when we're, when we're touched spiritually, then we share what we have with others and then their lives are enriched and changed and it, it gets passed on. And that's the good news of the gospel. That's the good news of what it means to live in community together. And as we share our lives together in what we call the church. So that's my word for today. Um, I hope that that your thirst is satisfied and that you know that this God gives you water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. And that's an eternal promise that God has given to us over and over and over again. So thanks for joining me today. Hope you'll know of God's love that surrounds you know of my love for you, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Have a great day.